Hi, today we're going to multi-track uh, Mozart's 40th Symphony first movement. I'm going to walk you through the process of adding wind parts. I've already finished the string parts for the whole movement, so this is going to be uh, sort of just showing you how I, how I work. I don't always like write parts down. Sometimes I make arrangements if I'm going to publish them on my website. A lot of times for a big piece like this, if I'm not going to publish and release the parts for recorder, I'll just read off the original parts. Okay, so now I've got the, uh, all the wind parts here. It's usually like pretty hectic, uh, the amount of music that comes out. These are actually pretty serviceable parts. They're really nice. So the oboe part, first and second oboe on one part, which is really handy for me. So you can see here, I've got all the um, string parts already done. So I've got a lot of edits. These are usually just retakes where I've, I've got something, um, I've got something laid down and I have to retake a part. So I, I'm basically, this is just, all these lines is where the edits are. For all of my videos, I add reverb actually because I like I don't like the dry sound. It's it, it's not that much. Um, I've got it fairly dry. You see, when I make these recordings in a room, it doesn't really look very realistic if if I'm in a small room and I have all this reverb. And this is my mixing board, and I haven't mixed it yet. Well, I've mixed some of it. The bass part I've turned down a lot because the 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 contrabass was very loud when I record. You can see how loud the contrabass is. You can see by the, the size of the um, of the waveform that it's much louder than the C bass. So I've actually turned that down. You can see these are where the stereo panning, so how it sits on stage. Basically, I try to just pan it like as if it's an orchestra. So the flutes are sitting in the front, sort of off to the left. And then I've got the two oboes sitting like that. So there's an oboe here and an oboe here. And then we've got the clarinet sitting behind first and second where they'd sit in an orchestra. So behind the flute and the oboe. One of the most important things to decide is which instrument plays which part. If the flute part could work, usually I play flute parts on alto recorder um, or soprano. This could work on soprano, but I'm actually gonna play it on alto because I feel like it'll sit better. I feel just, I don't wanna be so squeaky. You can see I've got 13 measures of rest and then I come in at measure 14, right? I don't have measure numbers on this part. I just have rehearsal numbers. That's kind of annoying. Always make sure to keep the recorder warm. I usually warm the head joint up, uh, make sure that I, if I come the next day, it'll be uh, the same pitch that I had the day before so that the pitch doesn't go off. Okay, so now I arm the recording and then I, I make it so I can hear myself. This sends, the, uh, this, this sends what I'm playing through to the headphones so I can hear everything in my background. And I have a metronome on. Now I use a metronome when I record um, most of the things. Sometimes I don't, but usually I do to hold it together. Now when I set things up, I have this mic uh, on a stand so that I know if I come tomorrow and continue recording, I'll, I know about where to be. I record quite close to the, this is a condenser mic by Rode, uh, NT2500 I think it is, and I, I get nice and close. It can handle that and I get some nice wind sound, which I like to have. I like to have a nice windy sound on the recorder. And we go. Uh, this is what I've just recorded. You can see um, it starts out with some silence, but that's okay. If I want to, I can clip off the silence so I don't get a lot of extra noise coming in from from when I've, uh, if I've breathed in or something like that. Just for fun, why don't we look at the oboe part and lay that down too. This comes in right on those chords. You can see um, on the flute part, it was a C sharp and I, it's the same place. These are, these chords play together. Yeah, so it'll, it'll make a nice, hopefully it'll, chord will be in tune. This is gonna be a dissonant. Now that didn't I, that didn't cue up very well. You can hear it when I when I came down off the half note. I mean it's okay, but it's not great. The ending wasn't the ending of the 
final chord didn't cue up, so I'll do that again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, we're gonna lay down the second oboe, which is just in thirds. Um, start off the same place. Once, once you get into it, it's pretty quick to just lay down these parts. the clarinets you can see when the, the clarinets actually in octaves with the uh, with the flute when this, this comes in here now if I look at this part this part fits on two tenors uh, as far as I can see it goes down to D so we're down a step we read down a step because it's in B flat so F sharp uh, goes down to D here it's it's high enough that I'm gonna want it stays in mostly high enough so I'm gonna want to play it on a tenor otherwise I could play it on a bass so the armor clarinet part, first clarinet. Now we go to bassoon, and you can see that once again I've, I've um, I'm pairing up with clarinet and flute here on this passage. We're gonna play this part on two bases. I mean, it, it goes pretty high, it spends a lot of time with, in this in this leading part, it's, it's up pretty high. It's up too high for like a C bass. Um, this won't be in the right octave, but it's okay to just, to just play that on the, play that on the bass recorder up an octave. It's a, I'm, I'm making the decision now to favor the high register of the bass instead of playing it on a C bass. Uh, the exciting thing about this passage, of course, is that we lead, it'll, it'll do these chords, and then it has this tail at the end, so we can go a little longer. And luckily, that's only an F sharp, so that's, that'll fit on the bass. Now, some people play with the direct blow into the bass, so you turn the head joint, and you play into that. But then you don't get the, uh, you don't get the sound coming out directly into the mic. I like the, the sound. The nice bright um, sound of the of the window going directly into the mic. So I always play with the vocal on, and the, then I get the sound. All right, we're ready to go soon. <laughs> Okay, so now we have the horn parts to finish off the winds. Uh, the horn parts are always exciting because the transpositions are can be all over the place. This one is in B flat and F. I'm gonna play this on a bass because this is this is actually a horn solo and this has to be just right. That has to fit fit on a on one instrument. So that's a bass part for sure. Okay, so this is horn. This is a little bit high on the bass, but let's try it. Horn one. Luckily, I can keep my mic where it was from the bassoon, so that's nice. It, the chord is getting very exciting. It's getting very exciting now. Okay, so now we have horn and F. Uh, this is an exciting part. This is a low horn and it's very wide. It goes all the way down to D and starts off on G. So we need to be able to cover and cover this high G and this low D if we can, which we can do on a C bass actually. And we're ready to do horn two. This will complete the chord and the winds. So let's just hear how it sounds. I'm gonna just make it so we can hear only the winds. So that's the way it sounds alone. Uh, let's hear it in the context of the rest of the orchestra.
So that was an introduction to the audio portion of how I work with multi-track videos. The next video will feature um, how I work with the video. So um, thank you for watching and have a good day.